This message is coming to you from Holiness Revival Ministry Worldwide, also known as Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide. Listen attentively as Pastor Paul Ricker, the International Director of the Movement, ministers to you in the anointing of the Holy Spirit. You will surely be blessed. This message is coming to you from Holiness Revival Ministry Worldwide, also known as Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide. Listen attentively as Pastor Paul Ricker, the International Director of the Movement, ministers to you in the anointing of the Holy Spirit. You will surely be blessed. We need it more than gold. We need it more than money. The word of God in the heart of man is something more than gold. More than gold. You need it more than gold, you need it more than money. The word of God in the heart of man is something more than gold, more than gold. You need it more than gold, you need it more than money. The word of God in the life of man is something more than gold, more than gold. Commit yourself to the world that it will change you. Our Father, we are before your restoring world, renewing world. We are asking that the power of your restoration will fall upon us. That your world will quicken our lives, renew our strength in Jesus' name. I pray that you will restore every facet of our life, even our Christian ministry, we shall have full restoration in Jesus' name. We bless your name, Father, because you answer our prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In our revival service today, we are considering God's promises for your restoration. God's promises for your restoration. The Bible tells us that many times in our life we need the restoring work of God. The psalmist tells us in Psalm 123, I'm sorry, Psalm 23, verse 1 and 3, he says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Verse 3, He restored my soul. God is my shepherd. And I know I will continue to serve him. I will live before him continually. Why? He restores my soul. He brings me back to life. Brings me back to health. 
brings me back to strength. He renews me. That's his duty. And therefore I bring you before the God of restoration. The psalmist in Psalm 42 cried for this restoring work of God. In Psalm 42, we read from verse 1, As the heart panted after the water brooks, so panted my soul after thee, O God. I long for God. I hunger for God. For the uplifting work of God. Uplifting power of God. My soul tested for God. For the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? Here you see the psalmist having something short. Lacking in something. And has a desire. What is the desire? To come up to a level. To come up to the presence of God. Come before the fullness of God. I long for that. I pray for that. In verse 3, my tears have been my meat, have been my food day and night. I sought, I, 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 he said, my tears have been my food day and night. While they continually say unto me, where is thy God? Something is lacking and even the people around me see it. The people around me see the way I am. They know something is wrong. That's why they ask. Continually, they asked me, where is thy God? You used not to be like that. We heard your voice. We knew your appearances. We knew your fervency of spirit. Something is lacking. Then he said in verse 4, when I remember these things, I pour out my soul in me. For I have gone with the multitude. I went with them to the house of God with a voice of joy and praise, with a multitude that kept holy day. I knew when I was so joyful for the Lord. I knew when I could sing and clap with revival. I knew it. I was joyful serving the Lord. So glad among people I inspired many by my life. Then in verse 5, he tells us his present state. Why art thou cast down? I'm not in joy anymore. I'm not in gladness of heart. The freshness of life is not in me. Why am I cast down? The soul has picked it. The soul itself is mourning. The soul is crying. Because I'm not in the state I used to be. Why art thou cast down? He was speaking to his soul as a different man talking to that soul. But it was his soul. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted within me? Restless. How will you not be restless? I knew how I used to be. Why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God. Is the God of restoration. Hope thou in God. He is the God of revival. The God of upliftment that will bring you up again. Will give you life again. He is the God that will put wings on you and make you fly up again. He is the God that will renew your strength. That you can run. He is the God that can make you fly and make you take a distant walk. Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him. For the help of his countenance, I am going to praise God for his restoring power. I am going to praise God for his restoring walk in my life. God will restore my life. The Lord is my shepherd. He restored my soul. He restores my soul. And he said to God, this man now said to God, he said, Lord, my soul is cast down within me. My soul. Look at the six. Oh my God. Oh my God. That's how I want you to pray this day. 
That's what I want you to say this day. Oh my God, my soul is cast down within me. That's what I want you to cry out. Because of the, your spiritual state. Oh my God, my soul is cast down within me. That's a good longing. That you have a desire to serve God despite your state. That's a good desire. Oh my God, my soul is cast down within me. My soul is cast down. I look weak. Helpless I am. Oh God, help my state. Raise me up again. Give me life again. Give me spiritual vitality. I want to take the Christian walk. And walk steadily. I want to run for the Lord. Yes, I want to mount up to the sky and fly. So, we see that in Psalm 23, the psalmist the enjoyed the continual restoration of his Lord. The Lord, his shepherd. And continued his godly life and service to the end of his life. Because he is the restorer of my soul. Then he, he said, surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me. All the days of my life. And I know because of his restoring work. I shall dwell in his presence forever. I bring you before the God that restores. I am bringing you before the God that restores, that quickens, that renews. That God will renew your life. He will restore you again to the fullness of Christianity. This God of restoration is our God. He promises to restore you, to bring you back again. He promises to pour more strength into you. Now, when do you need restoration actually? You need restoration when you are dry in spirit. You are dry. There is no freshness of the spirit in you. You are dry. Of course, the land is waiting for the rain. Because the land is dry. And if the land remains dry, you cannot cultivate it. If the land remains dry, you can farm nothing on it. You can plant no seed. Eventually, if rain does not come, we shall have no food to eat. If your life remains dry, there is no benefit that will come out of your life. You can't serve God in that state. You can't do anything meaningful for God in that state. If you remain in that condition, it's a it's deplorable condition. It's not helpful to your life. It's not helpful to your family. It is not helpful to the church. It is not helpful to the society. It is not helpful to the sinners. You need revival. When your spirit, when your spirit is dry. Dry. You need revival. When your prayer life is down, men ought always to pray and not to faint. But when you find that you don't obey the scripture, you're not always praying. Something has taken over prayer from you. You are not able to pray. Oh, you kneel down to pray, sleep takes you away. You kneel down to pray, some other wandering thought comes. You find difficulty to compose yourself to even pray. You need a revival. Something is wrong with you. You need a revival. Yes. You need a revival when the things of the Spirit do not interest you. The things of the Spirit don't interest you. You don't see yourself being pulled towards Bible. Being pulled towards the word of God. Being pulled towards the church of God. The fellowship of the brethren. There's no excitement when the songs of God are being sung. There's no excitement again. When the songs of God are being sung. There's no excitement about the things of God. You need a revival. Something is wrong. When somebody does not have an appetite to eat their sickness. Something is wrong. That's why he does not have the appetite. 
if you don't have spiritual appetite. You don't have spiritual appetite for God's word, for prayer, for fellowship, for the things of the spirit. You need a revival. You need restoration to of your soul. When do you need restoration? When you are discouraged due to persecution. Maybe you are persecuted. Persecuted in the working place. Persecuted in the family by your husband. Persecuted by your parents. Persecuted everywhere. And it has been a long persecution. You have become discouraged. Do I continue? Do I not? The things you used to do, you stop doing them because of persecution. The fellowship you used to attend, you stop going because of persecution. When such things happen, you need restoration. You need restoration. When do you need restoration? When you are discouraged because of the afflictions of life. Maybe a bad dream troubles you constantly. You live in such state, strained condition, and maybe you feel discouraged. Maybe you say you don't even know how to pray. Maybe what or what? You are passing through one other affliction, affliction of sickness, affliction of whatever circumstance, and uh, you are in that affliction. You don't know what to do. I tell you, you need restoration. To come back again to God. Whatever strength that affliction has taken out from you should be replaced by the living God. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He restores my soul. He put foil. Foil. He adds foil to me. He adds oil to my lamb. Give me oil in my lamb and keep me burning. You need that oil of restoration. So you can keep burning for Jesus. Again, you need restoration when you are sick. Sick in the body and incapacitated by your sickness. Sick and affected badly with your sickness. And you need restoration to faith. Because your sickness could have affected you. Even your belief in God. Your sickness could have weakened you. Because it's a time of great trial. And it would have affected you. No. You need restoration. To believe in God. Believe in the ability of God. Our God is able. You need restoration. When do you need restoration? When you are afraid. You are afraid in your life. You are afraid in, your, in the family. You are afraid in the way. You are afraid in the day. Afraid in the night. What caused you? Come, look at you now. You are looking very well. You are not blinking your eyes or your eyelids. You are not blinking your eyes. Now, as you look very well, if something, if you start blinking your eyelids, it's just something has entered there. That's why you are discomfort. I am mean, discomforted. Now, what am I saying? When you become afraid like that, something is wrong in your soul. That's why you are that afraid. You are that slavil, slavil, uh, slavishly afraid. Something is wrong. That's why you need restoration. To be brought back to the state of spiritual strength. To be brought back to the state of boldness. The righteous are as bold as the lion. You need revival when you have lost your Christian calling and ministry. You saw that you have lost your Christian calling. You saw that you have lost your ministry. What God called you to do, you are not doing anymore. What God gave you to do, you are not doing anymore. Why are you not doing what God called, gave you to do? You have lost the strength to do it. You have not even the strength to do it. Then you need a revival. A quickening power of God. To bring you back to your Christian calling. And to the ministry. When do you need, you need restoration? You need restoration when you are defeated in life. Actually defeated. You are lying down flat. Lying down flat. You are falling. You are completely falling. But the, the man, the, a, 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 God, 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 a God servant says, Rejoice not over me, my enemy. Though I fall, I shall arise. Why? I, I have a God that restores. I have a God. The righteous shall fall seven times. Yet shall he rise. I am saying, even if you are falling flat, you can still rise. 
Because our God restores our soul. Again, you need restoration. When you have you have backslidden, you have gone to commit some sin, you have gone to do some evil, you have gone to touch the accursed thing, and therefore your soul is crying within you. Your, your soul is bleeding within you because you have gone to touch some bad things, you have gone to temper with evil things, and you are crying within you, you need restoration. When David went into immorality with Uriah's wife, and even saying to kill that man in the war, and David was reproved. What did he do? He was rolling on the ground and said, Oh God, have mercy upon me. Restore my soul. Renew a right spirit within me. Oh God, forgive my sin. I have sinned against you. And God did it for David. That's why David continued with God for, to the end. The Lord is my shepherd. He restores my soul. Surely I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That's why I bring you to that same God. The God that restores. Even when you sin. That God, He will restore your life. He will restore your soul. You need restoration when you are cast out. You are cast out from among me. You feel in yourself that I have been driven out. You feel in yourself, I'm cast out from the house of God. I'm cast out. I feel in my spirit, I am cast out. Restoration will come to you in Jesus' name. God will give restoration to your soul. He restored my soul. Your Christian life. I mean, the inner man in you needs energy. The inner man in you needs spiritual power. Needs to wake in again. Need to arise again. Need to understand again. You need to stand. The inner man in you is lying down because it's discouraged. My soul is cast down. That inner man needs to rise up and stand. And stand on the two feet. So God is able to do it for you. He is able to raise you up. And make you stand alive in Christ. His restoration work is also for your health. He restores your health. Whatever is the state of your health, God restores it. Again, His restoration work is to your family. He set the solitary in, in family. God is able to restore your family. Whatever is the state in the family that is making life peaceless, causing arguments, causing pains, causing disunity, our God is able to bring order from chaos. He is able to restore the family to a state of peace. My people shall dwell in a peaceable habitation and in quiet dwelling places. My people, he is able to do it for you. Family restoration, family unity, God will provide. He's talking about restoration of ministry. Maybe you have lost your ministry completely. The work God gets you to do, your pastoral service, evangelistic service, Whatever the Lord has given you, you have lost it completely. Maybe the work even is removed from you. The Lord is a God of restoration. He will restore you back to work. The one that restored Samson back again to his ministry. Until Samson did the greatest work in his dying day. That one, he will rise you up. He will raise you up. He will restore your life in the name of Jesus Christ. You need restoration in every area, in the business area. In your business, God will restore you. Now, I say, the Lord is my shepherd. God is your shepherd. God is your Lord. And He restores my soul. He will restore your soul. What does it mean that God will restore your soul? It means He will renew your spiritual strength. He's going to renew you. Do you know what it means by renewing a license? So that you can still have a license to walk on, undisturbed, unchallenged. God is going to renew your spiritual life. That there will be no condemnation in your way. There is therefore now no condemnation. For those who are in Christ Jesus, God is going to bring up your life to a state of no condemnation. He's going to renew you. Restore you, it means he will revive your life. He will revive it again. 
revive your life. Come, have you seen a building that is lapidated? A building that is abandoned? A building that is cracked? A building that has become old? And you suddenly see that someone came and re- I mean, restored that building, revived that building, and brought life to that building, newness to that building. That's what God is saying He will do. He is the God of restoration that is going to bring newness to you. He's going to revive you again. You're going to put on strength again. You're going to put on energy again. Your Christian life will blossom. You're going to boom again. You're going to move forward. You're going to wild great energy again. Yes, God is going to revive you. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Restoration work, yes, He's going to revitalize you. Put life into you. He's going to put back spiritual life. Spiritual life. He's going to now cause your life to be ruled by His spiritual forces. He's going to cause life and strength in your life. He's going to revitalize you, restore you. Yes, what is the Lord going to do? He's going to refresh you. He's going to refresh your life. You need spiritual refreshing. There shall be showers of blessing and there shall be refreshing. You're going to feel fine again. You're going to feel good again. You're going to feel joyful again. That's the promise of God. The restoration, yes, He's going to refill you with the power of His Holy Spirit. That's the promise of God. And the Spirit power is coming upon your life. I say the Spirit power is coming upon your life. It's a refilling. God is promising this. Because He's the God of restoration. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He restores my soul. God is going to rest up your soul today. He's going to rest up your soul today. Your soul is going to receive spiritual energy from heaven. Your soul is going to stand strong and stand upright in the presence of the Lord. Today you're going to rejoice in the presence of the angels of God. Today a new thing is happening for you in the kingdom of God. Amen. He's going to restore you. Yes, He is going to rebuild your broken walls. The things that have been broken in your life. Prior time is a broken wall. Prayer is a broken wall. Evangelism is a broken wall. Even giving for the work of God has become a broken wall. Christian service is a broken wall. And all these things, relationship with people is a broken wall. Relationship with God himself is a broken wall. And God says, I'm going to rebuild your life. All your broken walls shall be rebuilt. That's the promise of God for you. He's going to build them up. And you're going to stand again. Your building shall stand again. The walls of God shall build around you again. That's the promise of God. Again, restore you here. He's going to reconcile you to himself. You have gone far. You are even afraid of God. You feel you have done something wrong. God is promising forgiveness for your life. He's going to forgive you. And when you are forgiven, you will not be afraid of God anymore. And you will come closer to him. That's his work. He's going to reconcile you to himself. He's going to draw you closer to himself. What will God do? Restore you? Yes, he's going to recommit you to the Christian ministry. He's going to recommit you. He's not going to remove his his grace from your life. When you are rebuilt, when you are reconciled, when you are refilled, he recommits you to the Christian ministry. That's the promise of God. He will restore your life. Restore you? Yes. He's going to rearm you for the last day battle. He's going to rearm you. Put more, in, put more weak points in your hand. He's going to fill you with the power, the power of warfare. His spiritual armor. He's going to dress you up again. So you can now stand properly and face that battle. You will never be defeated. Our God is the God of restoration. What is he going to do in your life? He's going to recover you from your sickness. He's going to recover you. That sickness will fly away. Because our God, he restores my soul. He is the God that restores my soul. That has been his job. That was why all the saints of all served him forever. 
is because he was in this business of restoration. That's why David was confident as he said, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. All the days of my life. Because every day I enjoy him. The restoration work of God. All the days of my life. And I will dwell in the presence of the Lord forever. Now, I tell you, be ready to be restored. Be ready to be restored. Your Christian life, check the position you were in, you're going back to that position. God is taking you back to that position. In fact, if it involves God putting you on, the, uh, on his wings to fly you up, he will put you in the wings and fly you up there. Praise the Lord. That's the God of restoration. I want to tell you about God's promises for your restoration. These promises are exceeding great and precious. Look at it. You will do exploits for God again. And the Bible calls them, they are precious promises. They are precious. Precious promises. Why are they precious? Because they are the delight of our souls. When you consider these promises, what a joy they give to your heart. They are the delight of our soul. They, they give us hope. They tell us that we should not give up. That God is still interested in our lives. They tell us we should not give up. That good is still coming in our way. God has not finished with us. Our fire is not yet full. God, God's message are still there. They are renewed every morning. They tell us we should hope for greater things that are still coming on our account from the merciful God, the gracious God. That's why these promises are precious. They are precious because they fill us with joy. We will know the goodness of God, the mercy of God. As I've seen in His promises, we are joyful. They are precious to hear. When these promises are read, they give, they are precious to hear. They are precious to see. If you have eyes to see them in scripture. Where they are. When you go through scriptures and see these promises. Precious to see. They are precious to read. If you are able to read these promises. They are precious to meditate. If you bring these promises to thinking through them. And applying them in your situation. And see what God says is possible. Is Precious to understand. And yet, the Bible says, they are exceeding great and precious. The promises are great. Why are they great? They are great because they are the weights of the great God. They are great because they are the power of the great God. These promises are great. As with God, all things are possible. So, these promises work out the will of God in whatever situation of life. They are great promises. They are exceeding great. Exceeding great and precious. Why are they exceeding great? It is because of the speed of action and the great accomplishments of these promises. When you believe them, when you act upon them, they walk fast, I will hasten my word to perform them. They walk mighty. They are exceeding great because of the great accomplishment. These promises bring about in our way. And these are the promises the Lord has given for your restoration. And they will work in your life. I said they will work in your life. Whatever is your spiritual state, if you listen to these promises, if you believe these promises, if you claim these promises, there will be restoration in your life. What is the Lord saying? I give you his promise number one. If the promise number one talks about his restoring presence with you. In the book of Isaiah. Chapter 41 verse 9 and 10. The Bible says, Thou whom I have taken from the ends of the earth. And called thee from the chief men thereof. And said unto thee, Thou art my servant. I have chosen thee and not cast thee away. God is saying, Are you discouraged? But not God chose you and has promised not to cast you away. He has chosen you. 
He said in the ends of the earth. He chose you from where you are. In the village where you are. In the community where you are. He said you are my servant. I, I chose you. I chose you. And I will not cast you away. So are you discouraged? Your God has not finished with you. Because he said never. He will not cast you away. Are you downcast? Not our God. The God that chose you said he has never cast you away. For your information. He made a diligent choice to arrive at you. And therefore he said he will not cast you away. So in whatever state of your life. In whatever state of your condition. Listen to what he said in verse 10. Fear thou not. Wherever you are. Fear thou not. For I am with you. That's God saying. My restoring presence is with you. Be not dismayed. Don't be discouraged. For I am your God. I will strengthen you. Is it not strength you need? I'm going to give you strength. That's the promise of God. I'm going to give you the strength to move on. I am going to give you the strength to stand. I am going to give you the strength to fight. I am going to give you the strength to overcome. He said, I will strengthen you. Yeah. I will help you. You are discouraged from moving forward. Because you said you cannot do it. God says he will help you do it. He is going to release the power to do it for you. He will sponsor it for you. He said, I will help you. Yeah, I will uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness. I'm going to lift you up. Are you saying that I don't know whether this Christian life I can continue? God says he will use his righteous hand to call you up. And you're going to be righteous. I say you're going to be righteous. God is going to make you righteous. There will be no blame in your life. He will perfect the thing that concerns your life. That's the promise of God. That's the God of restoration. Believe Him and you will not be in that state you are. Believe Him and then put on energy for the Christian life. And know that the Christian life has not ended yet. Continue the journey to the end of your life. Again, I'm talking about your shame shall be turned to glory. That's the promise of God. Your shame shall be turned to glory. Look at the book of Isaiah. Chapter 54 verse 4 to 8. Isaiah 54 verse 4 to 8 He said fear not For thou shalt not be ashamed Neither be thou confounded For thou shalt not be put to shame For thou shalt forget the shame of thy youth And shalt not remember the reproach of thy widowhood anymore the Lord is saying, you, you are in a state of shame now. By your present condition, you are ashamed. God is saying, that shame shall not be in you. Your future does not have a record of shame. Your future is a bright future. Your future is a good future. When you stand among your colleagues tomorrow, you shall not be ashamed. That's what God is promising you. He said, forget about the little, little things that are putting you to shame now. They are, they are clouds that you will pass through them. You are going, they are waters that you will cross them. And your better future awaits you there. Listen to what he says in verse 5. For thy maker is thy husband. The Lord of hosts is his name. And thy redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, the God of the whole earth, shall he be called. Verse 6. For the Lord hath called thee as a woman forsaken, and grieved in spirit, and a, and a wife of you. When thou wast refused, saith the Lord, and for a little moment have I forsaken thee. But with great mercies I will gather thee. In a little wrath I hid my face from thee. For a moment, but with everlasting kindness. Everybody say everlasting kindness. Say it again. That is what the Lord is promising is coming on your way. That is the shower that is coming down upon your life. He's calling it, but with everlasting kindness. Will I have mercy on thee, saith the Lord thy Redeemer. That's God. Just the little things you are seeing now. The little things you are feeling inconvenient about, God has timed them. 
God is aware of them. And he is saying, you are not going to be forsaken like that. You are not going to be put in that state forever. That is going to be a brief moment. And that a better future is coming on your way. A better future is coming on your way. Kindness of God is coming. Everlasting kindness. Everlasting joy. Is coming in your life in Jesus name. In, in Isaiah chapter 61. The 6. And verse 7. The promises of God's restoration. But ye shall be named the priests of the Lord. Men shall call you the ministers of our God. Ye shall eat the riches of the Gentiles. And in their glory shall ye boast yourselves. Can you see the Lord telling you a better ministry coming on your way? That they shall call you a dignified name. The ministers of the Lord. They shall call you man of God. They shall call you woman of God. Why? That's the plan of God for you. And you are going to eat the riches of the Gentiles. Listen to what he said in verse 7. For your shame ye you shall have double. Hallelujah. Amen. For your shame. Whatever that has made you ashamed today. A double promotion is coming on your way. You are going to be fully rewarded. For your shame. For that slap you receive from the devil. For that slap you receive from the wicked one. For the cheating you received you were cheated. When Jacob cheated, when, when, um, when Laban cheated Jacob, God knew how to transfer the, the wealth of Laban into the hand of Jacob. So, for your shame, you are going to have double. A better future is coming, and you are going to laugh, last and laugh forever. Amen. Hallelujah! Amen. That's the word of God. It's a God of restoration. He's telling you, you are not going to be in that state forever. For your shame, you shall have double. And for confusion... And for confusion, they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their, in their land shall, shall, in their land they shall possess the double everlasting joy shall be unto them. I pro, I'm telling you by the word of the Lord, the joy of the Lord is coming upon your life. The joy of the Lord is coming upon your house. That's the God of restoration. I'm, I'm, I tell you again, he shall, you shall have plenty by the restoring power of God. You're going to have plenty. Forget about the present scarcity. The rain is coming. The later rain is coming. The restoring rain is coming. In the book of Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2. We read verse 25 to 27. You see what the Lord is saying there? You see what the Lord is promising you there? He said. He said in verse 25 and I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten the canker womb and the caterpillar and the palmer womb my great army which I sent among you and ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that have dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. And ye shall know. That I am in the midst of Israel. And that I am the Lord your God. And none else. And my people shall never be ashamed. It is repeated twice. In that the matter is repeated twice. Shows the certainty of this promise. That you are not going to be ashamed. That's the promise of God. All the devil has taken away. If you find a key, let him restore fourfold. And the Lord is saying, all Satan has taken away from you is coming back to you. It is coming back in a double portion. It is coming up, coming back in a restoring major. So it is coming back in a rewarding form. It's coming as a reward. Eventually, you are not cheated at all in life. Eventually, all things have been turned for your good. The Lord is telling you all the evils you have seen around you. All the evils that happen in your life. All the evils that happen in your working place. All the evils that happen in your family. All the evils of the body. Everything, they shall all be converted to good. And their value for good shall be added to your life. They shall be added to the progress of your life. 
That's the promise of God. And he said, said, all the years the cankerum has eaten, I'm going to restore them unto you. In every area of your life, in your financial life, in your spiritual life, in your material life, in your, in your marital life, in your family life, in your business life. I'm going to restore in your academic life. I will restore the years that the devil has affected in your life. He said, be not afraid. Be not afraid. Be glad then. That's what the Lord is saying. Be glad. Be glad. For he has given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain. The former rain and the later rain will join themselves in the first month. A restoring wealth is coming on your life. Praise the Lord. That's the promise of God. And what the Lord promises he will do. Again, your sorrow and weeping shall be turned to joy. That's God. That's God. You can't remain in that state. Because the Bible tells us, the Lord is my shepherd. I serve the living God. He restores my soul. He brings me back to strength again. That's how I continue to serve Him and to rejoice in Him. Look at the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 66 verse 5. Here the Lord says, Hear the word of the Lord. Ye that tremble at His word. Your brethren that hated you, that cast you out for my name's sake, and said, Let the Lord be glorified, but he shall appear to your joy, and they shall be ashamed. Can you see what the Lord said? When your brethren cast you out, when they saw you in your poverty, they saw you in your state, they laughed and said, Yes. They, in fact, they said, praise the Lord, because of your state, the Lord said, that God shall appear for your good. Amen. And those people shall be ashamed. That's the promise of God. Verily, verily, I say unto you, that ye shall weep and lament, but the world shall rejoice. And ye shall be sorrowful, but your sorrow shall be turned into joy. That's Jesus promising you. And again he said in verse 21, A woman, when she is in travail, has sorrow, because her hour is come. But as soon as she is delivered of the child, she remembereth no more the anguish for joy that a man is born into the world. The Lord is saying, By virtue of the good that is coming on your way, you shall forget the sorrow of today. That's what he's saying. A woman was passing through pain and was crying because of the pain of childbearing. But suddenly a child came out. A baby boy. The one the husband has been longing for. The one the husband has been looking for. Yes, a baby boy came out. And uh, the woman started laughing. Hey, just throw the child up and start laughing and forgot the sorrow of yesterday. God is saying you're going to forget the sorrow of today. You are going to forget the sorrow of yesterday because a better future is coming on your way. A restoring future. He is the God that restores. He is the God that restores. Come, look around and see whether you can see any fresh grass around because we are in dry season. The scorch of the heat has burnt up every grass. Watch and see. And then give the restoring the time. And look back again. You will see green grass everywhere. This is the work of God. Green grass is coming up. Green mist is coming on your way. And Jesus said here in verse 22. And ye now. Uh, he said. And ye now therefore have sorrow. But I will see you again. And your heart shall rejoice. And your joy, no man shall take it from you. Your joy shall last forever. Hallelujah. That's the word of God. Restoration of God. He shall restore health and peace unto you. Oh, you're having disturbed health, disturbed bodily health. You're having a, a disturbing sickness. God is promising you a restoration in your health. In the book of Jeremiah, chapter 30, verse 17. Jeremiah, chapter 30. Verse 17. Here the Bible says, For I will restore health unto you, and I will heal you of your wounds, saith the Lord, because they called you an outcast, saying, This is Zion, whom no man seeketh after. 
the Lord himself has promised this. He is going to restore health to you. People are saying you are nothing because of your sickness. But God has said, I will restore health unto you. You are going to be healed. You are going to be cured. And God is also promising to restore you to salvation, righteousness and peace. If you are backsliding in your life. The God of mercy is promising spiritual restoration. In Jeremiah chapter 33 verse 6 to 8. He says, Behold, I will bring it health and cure. And I will cure them. And will reveal unto them the abundance of peace and truth. And I will cause the captivity of, of Judah and the captivity of Israel to return. And will build them as at the first. And I will cleanse them from all their iniquity. Whereby they have sinned against me. And I will pardon all their iniquities. Whereby they have sinned. And whereby they have transgressed against me. That's God's promise for your life. What are the sins you have sinned? God says He will forgive you. He said He's going to cleanse your life. He's going to renew your life. He's going to heal you. All those sicknesses that have attacked them, sins that have attached themselves to you, God is going to cure you of those sins. That's the promise of God. And restore righteousness to you. He will restore peace and the beauty of God to you. Listen to what He says in verse 11. The voice of joy. And the voice of gladness. And the voice of the bridegroom. And the voice of the bride. And the voice of them that shall say, Praise the Lord of hosts. For the Lord is good. For His mercy endureth forever. And the voice of them that shall bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. For I will cause, I will cause to return the captivity of the land. As at the first, saith the Lord. Let us all say, Amen. I tell you number two, God's restoring agents. God's restoring agents. God makes use of the agents of restoration to minister His restoration to our souls, to our family, to our ministry, to our health. This restoring agents include, number one, the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God shall do it. He says, the zeal of the Lord shall perform it. He says, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. It is the spirit that does it. The Bible says, he sent forth his spirit, and the surface of the earth is renewed. So, by the working of the Holy Ghost in your life, there shall be restoration in Jesus' name. He calls him the comforter. Holy Ghost is the comforter. You are sorrowful in your state. Like the psalmist that says, Oh God, my soul is cast down. Oh Lord, my soul is cast down. And he, 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 he said, my, oh, Why are thou cast down, oh my soul? Why are thou restless within me? Then the Lord says, In the book of John, Chapter 14, Verse 16, 17 and 26. Here the Bible says, and I will pray the Father. And he shall give you another comforter. That he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth. Verse 26. But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things. And bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. This Holy Ghost, the comforter is coming to comfort your soul. It's coming to satisfy your soul. It's coming to refresh your soul and lift up your soul again. It's coming to fill you with good things. And fill you with the goodness of the Lord. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And all that is within me, bless His holy name. And forget not all His benefits. Who forgiveth all thy transgression, thy sins. He forgives your sins. He cleanses you. He renews your youth like the eagles. Who filled thy mouth with good things. So that your youth is renewed like the eagles. That's the walking of the Holy Ghost. That's the walking of the Holy Ghost. That you are joyful. You cannot praise the Lord. That's the walking of the Comforter. So, the Holy Spirit 
is the restoring agent. In fact, the principal restoring agent. Because he is the coordinator of all other, all other restoring agents for your life. He coordinates them. He knows how to bring you up. He knows how to take you out of that state. He knows how to fill your heart with joy. He knows how to renew your strength. He knows how to make you strong and powerful. Yes. He knows how to do it. Submit your life to Him. Yield yourself to Him. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit. He wants to bring you out of that state. He wants to bring you out of that pit. He wants to bring you out of that hole. Where you are. He wants to raise you up. He wants to lift you up. He wants to take you up high. Therefore don't resist the Holy Ghost. He is there for your restoration. The Lord is my shepherd. He restores my soul. Holy Ghost is a principal restoration. Number two, the Word of God. The Word of God is a great restoring agent in our life. Very great. Walking along with the Holy Ghost in the restoration of our soul. In Isaiah chapter 55, verse 10 to 13. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I send it. And because of the ministry of my word to you, for ye shall, for ye shall go out with joy, ye shall go out with joy, and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you, into singing, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the fair tree, and instead of the briar shall come up the mighty tree, and it shall be to the Lord for a name, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. By the word of God, the word of God, it shall restore you. When you stand on this world, you believe on this world, you claim this world, it will work. The promises in his, he, God promises in His Word to restore Israel back to their land, and the Word of God was fulfilled to the letter. God's Word and promises never fail. His Word will produce your restoration. His promises heal all weaknesses and quicken the spirit and soul and body to life. The Word rejoices the heart. I rejoice in Thy Word as much as in all riches. Thy word that was found and I did eat them, and thy word was in me a, a joy and the rejoicing of the heart. It, it, is, the, it is the spirit that quickens it. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. And today you are sitting before the restoring word of God. Let not your Christian love remain the same. Do not remain the same in your position. Do not remain the same in your state. Improve in your life. Rise up in your life. Stand in your life. Let this word deliver you. Let this word lose you. Let this word make you to be strong. Let it fill you with the power of the living God. That's the power of the world. A comforting world. A blessed world. A sweet world. Restoring agents. Yes. The angels of God. The angels of God are restoring agents. That restore. Do you remember when the devil came and tempted Jesus? And after the temptation, angels came and ministered to him. Restor renewed his strength for a continual battle. You remember that? Do you remember in the Garden of Gethsemane when Jesus was praying there and the angels came to him there and ministered to him and strengthened him for the service of the Lord. They are the restoring agents of the Lord. They renew your strength. They prepare you for the battle. They, they, they equip you for the work of the Lord. That's the working of the angels. Again, restoring agents, we talk about fellow me. God uses your fellow me to restore you. The God that comforted them that are cast down. Comforted us by the coming of titles. We were highly comforted. Paul said it in 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 4 to 7. 2 Corinthians 7, verse 4 to 7. He said, we were highly comforted. 
by the coming of titles. We, which titles brought news from you? Brought the things you gave him. God often uses fellow men to minister restoration to us. The restoring property in our fellow men include their presence. Just as they come before us. Just as they just come to us. To visit us. We are renewed. Their loving actions. When we see their actions of love towards us. We are restored. Their gracious ways. When we, when we hear the gracious ways. That come out of the Behold, it was spoken in season. How beautiful. How beautiful. So when we hear the gracious words, we are restored. It includes their generosity. When we are in need and downcast, and they come with wealth for us, come with wealth and bless us with gifts, how, how restored are we? It includes their intercessory prayers. When they come and pray along with us, when they tell us that they are praying with us, how renewed are we? How restored are we? It includes their songs as they sing for us. And we hear their beautiful songs. Do you remember the songs of David that cast out the demon from Saul? And restored that, that man to senses. Restoring agents of God. When these people minister this way, we are restored. Willing to welcome God. The Lord has given a ministry of restoration for our lives. Give chance to people. Because God sends people to come and restore us in our various states. You may be in a state, in a state that no, you think nobody knows. And truly, nobody knows. But God may reveal your case to another person. He builds it and says, Go to this, my servant. This is the state of this person. Go and minister to him. Or go and minister to her. And restore her soul. Restore him. Many people have been delivered from grievous sins. By the restoring work of God to his special messenger. Do you remember the case of the children of Israel in Egypt? They were under the tyranny of Pharaoh. Crying. Sighing. And the Lord came to Moses and said, I have seen the cry of the children of Israel. I have seen the promise Pharaoh gives them. I have heard the, their groanings. Come therefore and I will send you to Egypt. I am going to send you to Pharaoh to go and bring my people Israel out of Egypt. Restore them to their liberty. Go and bring them out of the bondage of God. Moses was not with them, but the Lord revealed it to Moses several miles away. Therefore, don't receive what God has given the ministry of restoration to your life, to bring you back to, 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 to spirituality, to restore you to the ministry, restore you to proper function in Christ, to restore you to the kingdom of God. Again, if you are one, the Lord wants to use you to restore another. It may not be easy. It was not easy with Moses. Don't fear. Don't reject it. You may say, but this person will help me. This person will help me. If I go and say, the Lord tell, told me that you are, this is what you are doing. The Lord told me you committed immorality. The Lord told me you are practicing witchcraft. The Lord told me that you stole this and that. If I go and say so, the person will say, I am a liar and that will be discredited to my ministry. Don't, don't be afraid of that. The God that says you will back you up. Therefore, avail yourself that God will use you to restore people to their Christian life. Restoring agents, restoring agents, yes, the elements of nature. God uses the elements of nature to restore people back to life again, back to vitality. What is that? Jonah. Jonah was angry. Jonah was sitting somewhere and God wanted to restore him. What did he do? He made a tree to grow, a girl. And this tree just grew, grew overnight and covered the place where Jonah was sitting. And gave Jonah wonderful shade. The Bible says Jonah was just laughing in joy. Life was just so good for him. Why? Just because of a tree. God uses elements of nature. Yes, he makes use of the girl to provide Jonah with shade to restore his angry and a great soul. He uses many elements of nature to comfort us, 
to restore us, such as food. You may be as hungry, as very, very weak, as God provides food for you. Immediately you eat your food joyful. It may be food. It may be warm. It's just in a very cool part. You feel very cold, and then the Lord provides warm for you. It gives you joy. It may be a good breeze. In a cold weather, the Lord causes a good breeze to blow around you. You feel happy. You feel joyful. You say, oh God, where are you now? Thank you. In just the water, the water you pour on your body, what a gratification that you receive a restoring health. It, or the water you drink, it may be beautiful things as you see around. You see some beautiful flowers, beautiful animals, or beautiful things around. You feel so joyful, so much. Or you may hear a music, a bait may be singing. And the voice of the bait is good to hear. Go, go, go to hear. Or maybe it's a music from a concert or whatever. You're just joyful. That's the restoring agent. Now, you need restoration in your life. I say you need restoration in your life. The Lord is my shepherd. He restores my soul. I tell you on God's path to your restoration. However far, you have gone in witness or backsliding. God can restore you again. Son of man, shall these bones leave? Down the way. Son of man, prophet went to the bones and said, you are going to leave. God is saying, you are going to leave. God is saying, you are going to rise again. God is saying, you are going to be truly a Christian. You are going to be really poor again. God is saying, you are going to overcome in your life. That thing that puts you down, you will break it through. That's the promise of God for your life. Prophesy to the dragons and say, I'm going to make you to leave. So, but how do you get restored? You need to walk in God's part of restoration. And that includes humble yourself, repent, and seek His faith. In Second Chronicles, Second Chronicles chapter 7, I read verse 13 and 14. If I shut up heaven, that there be no rain, or if I command the locals to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, and will forgive their sins, and will heal their land. If in your present state you can humble yourself, you will not feel proud and say, I am a Christian for many years, and you know you are not a Christian. You know some damage has happened to you. You know you have been badly wounded in the world. And humble yourself and say, I am in need. And accept the ministry of God's servant for the restoration of your life. Accept the work of God for the restoration of your life. Repent from your sins. Are you wounded because of immorality? Are you wounded by drunkenness? Are you wounded because of money and bribery? Whatever has wounded you, come before God and confess. Come before God and repent of the sins. Are you wounded by occultism or cultic practice? Come before God and confess and bow before Him. Surrender your life to God and the Lord is promising that He will restore you. He will heal your life. All those things that are going on around you, God is going to set them in proper order. That's what He has promised you. Then, but return to God with all your heart. Hosea chapter 6, verse 1 to 3. The book of Hosea chapter 6, verse 1 to 3. Come and let us return to the Lord. For He has come and He will heal. He will heal us. He has smitten and He will bind us up. After two days, He will heal His life. In the third day, he will raise us up, and we shall live in his sight. So you see, the word is come. Let's return to the Lord. Come back to Jesus. Come. Well, he healed you. He wounded you. He, he, he sinned. He, he allowed many troubles to come your way. He allowed many sicknesses, many diseases, many problems, difficulties to come in your life. The Bible says the God that allowed those things to come, he will remove those things back from your life. After two days, he shall revive us. He will renew us. We shall turn in his side. Come again. Arise and stand. Be the soul. Serve God in vitality. Serve God in strength. Serve God in fullness of energy. That's what the Lord is telling you. That God promised for your life. Again, he says, wait upon the Lord. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 40, verse 28. 
to take to one. Here the Bible says, Have thou not known, have thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, painted not, neither is willing, there is no certain for the spirit of falling, he giveth power to the end. And to them that have no mind, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings of eels. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Hallelujah. That's the promise of God. The Lord is saying he's going to make you fly. If you can wait upon the law. That's why. Spend time. Go and get in his presence. Go and study his word. Go and kneel down before him in meditation. Going through the world. Go and spend time to pass some time before the Lord and see what will happen. And see you will be flying in the sky. That's what God telling you. You're going to be flying. You will learn and the spirit will still be there. You will take a long trek to go as Elijah trekking for 40 days and 40 nights. But he ate food from the Lord. Then he waited upon the Lord. So the Lord said, wait upon the Lord. Then you will renew your strength. Finally, persist in faith and prayer. In the book of Luke chapter 18, I read the 1 to 8. The Bible says, Please take a parcel of to them to this end, that men ought only to pray and not to pray. Saying, There was in a city a judge who feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city. And she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of my adversary. Restore to me what my enemy has taken from me. And he was not for a while, but that word is said within himself. So I say no God, no Gamma. Yeah, because this will not trouble me, I will repay our adventure, let I have continual coming, she will me. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust God say. And shall not go avenge his own delay, who shall day and night on him, though he be long there. I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of the Christ shall be found faith on the earth, my brother, what is wrong that is the solution in your life? My sister, what is wrong that is the solution in your life? Take you to the Lord in prayer. Thank you to the Lord. Believe God. Hold fast and let the Lord restore you. Let the Lord bring back your Christian life. Let him bring back your Christian glory. Let him bring back your Christian duty. Let him bring back your Christian
Thank you. 